Hi, I'm Marcus. Welcome back to the historic serious topic of art of war, famous battle in ancient China. In this episode, we shall discuss how Bai Qi used tactical deception and a geographical feature to encircle Zhao's four hundred thousand soldiers with five hundred thousand men. Moreover, what Bai Qi did to those surrendered soldiers would also a key answer for us to find out. In the part two, we had learned that the king of Zhao Xiaocheng Wang's confidence had wavered due to the constant defeat on the front line and the plot for troops to Qin. Nevertheless, Qin isolated Zhao from other friendly states in the disguise of a warm welcome reception without progress. What's worse, the spies of Qin took the opportunity to spread rumors that Qin feared no one but Zhao She's son Zhao Kuo. While Zhao Kuo was a smart young man who read lots of books. Art war with few military experience. Under the dual background of the draining of grain supply and his anxiety to turn the battle situation, the king of Zhao voluntarily stepped into Qin's trap. He replaced Lian Po with Zhao Kuo and pushed the young general to turn the battle situation immediately. Before long, as Qin's force pretended to be defeated by Zhao Kuo, they successfully drove the Zhao's main force out from its defense line. Yet, the young general did not realize that he and his huge army had fallen into doomed end. It was almost twenty miles from the front line of Danshui River. A troop of twenty-five thousand Qing's force was marching among the mountain secretly. Their objective was simple and clear: strike the Zhao's force in the rear and take the whole defense line of Bai Li Shi Great Wall. Their tactics proved to be successful, as the defending force of Zhao. Never expect an attack from the rear. Xiangping Guan Mountain Pass had fallen shortly. Then they assaulted the Guan Mountain Pass with a reinforcement afterwards. The fallen of Xiangping Guan and the Guan Mountain Pass symbolized the loss of the defense line of Bai Li Shi Great Wall for State of the Zhao. How could this happen? Where was Zhao Kuo and his huge army at that moment? Zhao Kuo was still planning for an offensive against Qin on new directions. The Zhao's force had been driven off from the defense line of Guangwangchen Fortress for times. The force of Qin, based on the defense line, in contrast to their previous movements, refused to confront with the Zhao's force. And then he received the report of the harassment of Qin's force. Though it was unclear about their number, it seemed that they had struck the camp from many directions. The inexperienced general lost the ability to analyze in that moment. He began to recall the similar situation read on the books by instinct. 
Perhaps he found some evidence to suggest the next move, or was at a loss about what to do. Anyway, he chose the most cautious way to avoid mistakes. He gave command to all to hold the ground and wait for Qin's attack. However, what he did not expect was that again he had fallen into Baiji's trap, and it was his decision had won the precious time for Baiji's key movement. Now, let's review Baiji's masterpiece and see how he manipulated the situation. The first step. But Harry's job was done to make him confused and have him stay put at a defensive position. Step two: send twenty-five thousand troops in secret, flanking to the rear of defense line by the Shukri Corps to solve the force of Jiao and two Changping Guan and Gu Guan mountain pass. The reinforcements will follow. Step three: dispatch the five thousand troops to cut off the connection between Zhao's main force and the force of baggage in Pedimenta. Then join the twenty-five thousand troops to attack Gu Guan Mountain Pass. The reinforcement would follow. When Zhao Kuo realized it was a trap and that there would be, would be no engagement with the Qing's force. The Qing's fort had already cut off the connection and had them surrounded. Zhao's main force was trapped in a triangular area, approximately fifty square kilometers. Thus, Bai Xi vastly utilized the local topography to encircle the main force of Zhao with almost five hundred thousand soldiers. Nevertheless, it could be a tough mission to eliminate four hundred thousand men with five hundred thousand. The key issue was, Zhao Kuo's supply had been subsequently cut off. Apparently, instead of taking the offensive, Bai Qi was managing to starve the enemy and had them lost the fighting strength. And how would Zhao Kuo respond to this? In his work, the Book of Historical Records, Sima Qian only used nineteen characters in Chinese to describe his response. Qin dispatched Sou troops to strike Zhao. Zhao could not resist. Thus, they built temporary fortress. And defense line for reinforcement. As the description was too simple, it might give rise to at least two doubtful points. First, when the majority of the troops of the whole state were surrounded in Changping, the ruling class of State Zhang should as anxious as soldiers on the front line. Yet there was no historical materials could indicate their thoughts and actions at that moment. We will discuss this in detail later. Second, though being surrounded, Zhao Kuo still had hundreds of thousands of troops under his command. As the situation had a vastly turned against the Zhao, how could one wave of assault from Bai Xi? Forced the Zhao Kuo abandon the hope to break through. Therefore, Qin's assault against Zhao, as we illustrated previously, must be a feint attack. There might be a strike back from Zhao Kuo, and it would determine whether Bai Qi's encirclement was successful or not. Zhao Kuo would never sit back and wait to be surrounded or annihilated. The key issue was, 
which direction will be the right option? The main force of Qing were stationed in southwest. The Danish River was on the west. Its depth required ferrying. Not to mention the small amount of Qing's force had been deployed on the opposite side of the river. The plausible way was to retake the defense line by the Shi Great Wall. Yet Qing also understood the issue at stake. If Zhao Kuo had broke through the defense line, all the efforts and sacrifices they had made would vanish into nothing. Therefore, as long as Zhao Kuo start attack the defense line of Bai Li Shi Great Wall, the main force of Qing behind would follow its tail and bite. It was a crucial combat; no one could afford to lose. We cannot provide any details about this combat, as it did not exist on the official record. But I believe it is a reasonable inference. Anyway, when the combat was over, Zhao Kuo Fei escaped from the encirclement and thoroughly gave up the notion to do it. Until forty-six days later. On the other hand, the Qing's force must also taken heavy casualties as well. Once again, some kind of standoff was occurred. It's time to test those kings far away from the front line. The moment the King of Qing received the report that Zhao Sami had been surrounded. He departed from Xianyang to Yewang right away. The liner distance between the two cities was more than 400 miles. It would be an uneasy journey for the King of Qing, but to win at all costs was a top priority for him. According to Sima Qian's description. The King of Qing promoted all the civilians in Henei Prefecture and dispatched men above fifteen to Changping instantly to further strengthen defense and hold potential reinforcement of Zhao. What they passed through was the Taihangxing Mountain Pass, which had troubled Lianpu for a long time. The place of vital strategic value once again played. A significant role in the battle. As a matter of fact, it was unlikely for Zhao to send effective fighting strength into Changping, particularly when Qing had gained overwhelming advantage with the arrival of the reinforcements. That might explain why there were few records of the ruling levels of the Zhao in the latter part of the battle. For Zhao Kuo and his men, all hope had lost. Desperation and starvation had silently spread within the camp of Zhao. Even anthropophagy was occurred now and then. Zhao Kuo still maintained the order, yet he knew there would be no reinforcement anymore. He has to rely on himself. What he did not know was Qing's long-range missile troops were planning to give him the death blow. In fact, the crossbowmen accounted for a high proportion of the Qing's army. The spare parts of the crossbow and arrows were all produced according to standard specification. It is estimated that its range. Was around 220 to 250 yards. Besides the three-edged arrows, which is more consistent to aerodynamics, was the exclusive weapon of Qing among the seven states. Furthermore, the Qing army was equipped with the bad crossbow in large quantities. The lethal weapon could cover the range of almost 1,000 yards.
the combination of various missile weapons, the tremendous exterminate jobs were remaining fighting strength. Finally, Zhao Kuo would hide no more. He ascended the remaining Allied infantry and charged from four directions. While his destiny was due. Zhao Kuo had failed. At least he and his followers embraced the death as warriors. Whereas many of the soldiers of Zhao did not have such privilege. According to Sima Qian, the remaining soldiers of Zhao had surrendered to Qin when Zhao Kuo was killed. However, Bai Qi had a concern about their number. Worry that if he had left them behind, they might be a huge potential threat. What he did next would shock the world. As it described in the Book of Historic Records, Bai Qi had those surrendered soldiers of Zhao buried alive. But how could the Zhao soldier accept this fate without fight back? Particularly, their number was massive. Is there any archaeological evidence to support such an assertion? Currently, as part of the ancient battlefield site of Changping, it's just a normal village of peace and harmony. No sign to reveal it might be the hell more than 2,000 years ago. For 2,000 years, skeletons of Battle of Changping had been constantly found generation by generation. There are quite a few historical records about the human remains in Changping, official and non-official. We shall pick one case for simple understanding. In 723 AD, on his business trip to Changping, the Emperor Tang Xuanzong was shocked by what he saw as the skeletons piled up like mountains. Then he ordered relevant department to bury and commemorate the soldiers of Zhao. He named the temple as the Temple of Skeleton and renamed the valley as the Valley of the Consolation for the souls died with everlasting regret. And he decreed that they should hold the memorial ceremony for the dead in spring and autumn, generation by generation. In the following times, similar situation occurred again and again. Until 1995, modern archaeology were involved in the investigation. In 1995, archaeologists incidentally found a grave dates back to the Warring States period in a village near Gaoping. Precisely speaking, it was a pit of skeletons. There were more than 100 skeletons being discovered in the pit. Along with them were some personal belongings, such as coins and hair paints and so on. It might occur to us a doubtful point. How could we know all these skeletons belongs to the pole souls of Zhao?
perhaps we can get some insights from the famous historic book, *Strategy of the Warring State*. In 259 BC, one year after the campaign of Changping, King of Qin Zhao Xiangwang would like to take Handan and eliminate the state of Zhao. Thus, he inquired Bai Qi for his opinion. Part of Bai Qi's answer may reveal the truth. The Qin's force had destroyed the Zhao's force in the Battle of Changping. The death of Qin all had a proper funerals. They deserved. The wounded of Qin were all well treated and cared. By contrast, for the death of Zhao, their corpses were exposed in the wilderness without funeral. The wounded of Zhao got insufficient treatment. Consequently, we can conclude that. Except for the few corpses of Qin soldiers, could not be found. The majority of the corpses should belong to Zhao. In addition, the latest archaeological evidence may also support the conclusion. There were more pits of skeletons found in neighboring villages. In 2011 and 2022, with the addition of the former Wang in 1995, archaeologists found there were three features in common for these pits. First, the vast majority of the skeletons would be padded. Archaeologists found many knife and arrow wounds in the bones. Second, archaeologists found many personal belongings, such as coins and hairpins, dates back to that era. Most of them have the clear style and design of state jail. Third, numerous three-edged arrows had been discovered in these pits, even some on the skeletons. Yet, there was no single one primary weapon being found. The skeletons beheaded with wounds on the bones might imply that they were killed before buried. The personal belonging have the style of Zhao. In addition, three-edged arrow was an inclusive weapon of Qin in the period, while no primary weapon was found, may indicate these soldiers were captured and released armed before their death. Thus, these skeletons should belong to Zhao Kuo's soldier, instead of being buried alive. They were killed before buried. Hopefully, we expect to find more proof in the future. With the revelation of all the riddles, it's time to have a judgment for the Battle of Changping for reference. As the largest annihilation battle in classic era, its scale, time consumption, and sophistication was unprecedented. Both parties of the belligerents had matched wits against each other on their best. Eventually, the state of Qin had won the contest because they were more resourceful, patient, and ruthless. Moreover, their highly effective wartime law also acted as a prominent war. The strategies used in the battle fully displayed ancient Chinese military wisdom: subduing the enemy without fighting and. The highest form of generalship is to balk the enemy's plan. Yet, what is debatable was how Bai Qi treated the prisoners of war and his own destiny.
Baishu was a military genius. There is no doubt he had achieved a great victory. But it might be a dishonorable victory with controversy. The key point is, did he have option except for slaughtering them all? It is easy to condemn for what he had done on the morale ground nowadays. Nevertheless, there were two factors for us to think twice before we made our own judgment. First, as it mentioned in the historical record, though triumph belonged to Xu, its loss was immensely huge. Half of the soldiers were dead, the national power decreased dramatically. That means Qingmen lost approximately 250,000 to 300,000 soldiers in the battle. Second, as we discussed in Part 1, in 262 BC, the civilians and troops in Shangdang rejected the surrender of Qing and subsequently embraced the Zhao. Is that possible for Zhao soldier who had a surrender to Qing? rebel against Xi in the rear. Not to mention their number was huge for rebellion and the extra brain supply need to feed them. Therefore, Bai Xi was in a dilemma. Apart from his own reputation, a massacre may resolve all the concerns Yet, it may cause the panic of other six states and trigger off a fierce tide against the Qin. On the contrary, no one could ensure a huge number of surrounding troops would simply obey the order and integrate into the Qin society. Such a dilemma had also confused the latter generations. The relevant argument had never ceased for 2,000 years. Anyway, no matter what his intention was, Bai Qian made his own decision, and thus he had took the consequence. The Battle of Chongping ended up with the disastrous failure of Stai Zhao. Yet, the story was not over. The hatred and the conflict between Qin and Zhao state got even fiercer. Perhaps one day, Zhao would take vengeance on Qin and Bai Qi in another way. And we shall discuss this in the Battle of Handan, the end of the Battle of Chongping. Our introduction about the Battle of the Chinese had it finished here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next session. Have a great day. Shouldn't